Good morning, everyone. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. It's Dr. Toger, your friendly neighborhood colorectal surgeon. And um, good morning. Uh, welcome to our weekly broadcast called Gut Stuff. And thanks for tuning in, nerds. Um, we're going to learn something kind of important. I have to, I have to be honest with you. This is like transparency in, um, medicine in the modern era. But, um, as a surgeon, when it comes to blood sugar, we kind of deal with the end result of chronic elevated blood sugar. We don't really uh, trouble ourselves with why the patient became diabetic in the first place. Um, you know, and so we kind of deal with, all right, um, type two diabetes, these patients have gained weight, they eat a poor diet and they've developed insulin resistance. And this kind of where our curiosity ends as surgeons, a lot of our diseases are impacted negatively by diabetes. And a lot of the things we operate on are as a result of diabetes, such as heart disease and vascular disease. And um, in my residency training, we used to do pancreatic transplants and whatnot. That's more for a type one diabetic, but that's kind of like the limit of what I do. Cause after all, I'm a surgeon. Okay. So in the modern era, however, what I have found is that um, if you can prevent step one of a problem, then the problem never actually occurs. You know, like if you think about all those time travel movies, like the Terminator, you know, and they send the dude back in time to stop a sentinel event. And so I'd like to think of myself as the surgeon time traveler <laughs> tries to send myself back in time to the sentinel event and I cannot go back in time. But what I can do is alert the masses to what's going on currently in your life. This is the sentinel event. And if you understood that, maybe you could kind of help yourself because I will tell you, your doctor's not telling you this. They're waiting for you to have the diabetic issue. You know, and we're measuring tests, waiting for it to happen, as opposed to intervening and keeping you from happening. So, so that's what I want to do. We're going to talk about today um, how intestinal health directly impacts your blood sugar. And then as the weeks go on, we'll talk about how other aspects of your health interact with gut health, all of which directly impact your blood sugar. And what I'm hoping to paint is a picture where step one of every chronic human illness, including cancer, is intestinal inflammation. And step two will be a derangement in blood sugar. So we should be using certain blood sugar tests, not to see if you're diabetic, but to identify intestinal health. And the second your blood sugar is out of whack, we need to be thinking to ourselves, ah, oh, this is an intestinal health problem and improve that before the long-term consequences of diabetes sets in. So that is what I'd like to start doing in my own practice. And I do understand that I am a surgeon, so I'm happy to operate on you. I have a knife. I will cut you. <laughs> in fact, I'm on my way to the operating room this morning. Um, okay. So let's go over that and I'll try not to spend too much time jabbing. Um, as per usual, this lecture, like all of my Thursday morning lectures, is sponsored by a particular company called Super Patch. That is important because I use Super Patch technology in my own practice. Um, I am not forcing anyone to engage in using their services. I happen to like them a lot, and some people have mixed reviews. I'm going to let you decide. As a physician, I see too much benefit in this in my patients and in my own personal life, which is why I agreed to be on their board and is why I agree to give these lectures. And so the company does sponsor these lectures to demonstrate how physicians would use non-medical technology to improve the lives of their patients. 
And this indeed is one of those things. Okay. So every Thursday we'll talk about how I would use super packs to improve gut health and therefore improve other aspects of your health. And today we're talking about blood sugar. Now I have noticed Instagram kind of has me a little bit on the lockdown. Apparently I had some bots. I had no idea. I don't even know what a bot is, but I'm learning. And so there's a couple of malicious bots that have been sort of impacting my account. You might notice that some of the video you'll see me talking, but you can't hear the audio. That's one of the side effects of that. Um, and then in these lectures, the last minute or two sometimes gets cut off. And of course, that's usually where I reserve speaking about this technology. So in today's lecture, in fairness to the guy who's paying for the lecture, um, I'm going to sprinkle that concept throughout the lecture and uh, bear with me. The information um, otherwise is all free. And just think of this as watching regular TV where every now and then you have to watch a commercial. And so that is my financial disclosure for the lecture. <laughs> Just trying to be ethical here. Oh, speaking of which, okay, as it turns out, the word rectal might be negatively impacting my channel. I guess you can demonstrate all kinds of booty stuff, but you can't talk about it in a health way. So tomorrow we're going to launch a little bit of a help, a game, a code name game. I want y'all to start thinking of different cute code names I can use for different body parts and body functions. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. Um, that perhaps would keep me from getting banned. Instagram has never told me there's a problem. Meta has never told me there's a problem. But Facebook and Instagram in particular um, suppress a lot of my medical information because I talk about body parts and body function. And it's very hard to talk about health without talking about these things. This may be why you never see doctors speak on Instagram. They are probably out there and have no idea they're being suppressed. I didn't realize that for probably a year. So, so we're going to talk in code language. So going forward, instead of being the colorectal surgeon, I'm going to be the coloethical surgeon. And I only bring that up because step one of ethics is letting you know my financial <laughs> associations. Now, managing blood, let's get to the meat of things. By golly, if you're listening on Spotify, I have all of these um, PDFs are on our website at drannatoker.com. And it'll be under... We don't call it services anymore. We call it something else. Resources. We call it resources. So there is a typo at the end of this lecture. So go drannatoker.com slash resources. And you can download all the PDFs from my lectures for free. Uh, so you can follow along while you listen to the podcast. Okay. Uh, managing blood sugar and gut health. So basically... Inflammation of the intestinal tract is caused by diet issues, uh, genetics, your stress, your sleep, and all of these things can negatively impact your blood sugar. So when you're looking at someone who has a hard time controlling their blood sugar, it's, yes, diet has part of it. And it's not just because you're eating carbs. Um, it's the type of carbs you're eating, when you're eating them, what you're eating them with. And so along the way, in the next few months, we'll discuss kind of how to improve all of those things naturally without drugs. There are long-term consequences to elevated blood sugar. I mean, as a surgeon, I've amputated many body parts. I have debrided vast swaths of people's bodies from ne necrotizing infections. I've had patients fail to heal incisions, uh, struggle with complications after surgery, all because they are diabetic. And so diabetes is indeed a scourge. And it is not just a simple thing as you ate too many donuts. The donuts are part of it. <laughs> How do we monitor for blood sugar issues? Because it's a silent killer. You don't realize it's in your body. Blood sugar. I, I have amputated the legs of people who cannot identify that it is their blood sugar that caused that problem. Like they will not change their diet. They feel like they took some insulin and they can eat whatever they want to. And so they don't see the association. So I definitely want people to understand this association before we get to choppity chop. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then are there some interventions other than diet, other than medications that may or may not support you? 
I am not making a claim that Super Patch has a diabetic patch. That is not what I'm saying. Um, I do use their technology to improve sleep and to improve stress levels and to support the autonomic nervous system because those things improve gut health. And since gut health problems start before the blood sugar goes bad, that's where I use the super patch thing. So I need to be very clear. I'm not trying to say you can treat your diabetes with the super patch. That is not what I am saying. And I'll explain to you how I use it and how I support it. If I don't use that patch to treat quote unquote anything, it is a supportive mechanism like you would use an ACE wrap or K tape or some other physical therapy device. You need to think of it as a medical physical therapy device. Oh, I don't know what's happening. What's going on here? What's happening? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Well, I've completely, if you're watching on Spotify, let me apologize for doing something terrible to the screen. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Doctor. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to change channels over here on my slides. Today's only going to be a basic introduction. We talked a little bit about Super Patch. And what it does, it's going to support the autonomic nervous system. And when it supports the autonomic nervous system, some of those nerves it's supporting are what we call neuropeptide generating neurons. Uh, these are the neurons that are responsible for speaking with endocrine organs in your body, such as your adrenal gland. They speak in terms with neuropeptides as opposed to um, neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters come from your gut to your brain, and that's how your brain talks to your muscles and to your skin. But then there's neuropeptide, uh, neuro, uh, neuropeptides, um, which are more complex proteins, and they tend to speak to endocrine organs. I hope I wasn't too confusing there. Um, when you combine this support with the advice that I am about to give you, you will have enormous impact in your health. And so again, think of these devices as the same way you would use K-tape if you're an athlete, um, ACE wraps if you just twist an ankle. These things do not cure your disease. They support you while your body naturally tries to heal. And this is the same thing that Super Patch is doing. Okay, just so to be clear with what I mean by using Super Patch. Now, real briefly, uh, fasting blood sugar. Look, I'll tell you, I other than being pregnant, I don't think I've ever checked my blood sugar. Isn't that crazy? Don't you want to know, doctor? And I do. So I, I just ordered a continuous blood monitoring device um, because I'd like to know, my gosh, put my money where my mouth is, right? So, but if you don't know if you have diabetes, do a little hack. I mean, check your blood sugar from time to time. These devices are available at Walgreens. They're reasonably inexpensive. You can use a health savings account to purchase them. You don't need a doctor's prescription necessarily for them unless you want insurance to cover uh, these supplies. But if you're not diabetic, insurance will never cover the supply. You see how that works? We're waiting for you to get sick. And what I'd like you to do is intervene before you get sick. So yeah, I plunked down cash. I use my health savings account, but I paid cash for this blood sugar device because I am not diabetic. Just like if you're obese, your insurance company will not help you lose weight. We're waiting for you to get sick. Okay. And, and I don't want you to get sick. If your resting fasting blood sugar is between 100 and 125, we consider that a pre-diabetic state. And if it's over 126, you're diabetic. And of course, these numbers are a little bit different if you're pregnant. So I'm speaking to the non-pregnant, non-adolescent or pediatric age group. I'm talking to the people, the moms at six o'clock in the morning who might be watching this. <laughs> okay. So that's who I'm talking to. I'm assuming that you're a normal, healthy person. You don't know if you have diabetes or not. No one's ever told you. So therefore you don't, right? Okay. Um, let's talk real briefly on how blood sugar is absorbed. How do you get a blood sugar problem? Um, the first thing that has to happen is that carbohydrates that you consume have to be broken down. The first place they get broken down are in your mouth through something called amylase. 
one of the approaches to blunting blood sugar spikes is to kind of mop up the amylase in your mouth before you consume a carbohydrate. Now, of course, there's pharmaceutical companies that are creating little chewable things that you can chew prior to eating a lunch or whatever. I personally would suggest taking fiber. Uh, fiber has a tendency to mop up this amylase situation. So whether you eat a salad before lunch or you take a small chewable um, fiber tablet that kind of mops around in your mouth, just do one that doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. Um, you might find that you break down amylase and have less of a blood sugar spike. I'm going to be trying some of these experiments on myself. And that way I can demonstrate for the world kind of what I'm talking about. But the easiest thing to do is eat fibrous stuff first because it mops up the amylase in your mouth. The second thing that has to happen is a transcellular absorption. What the hell do I mean by that? Your intestines are supposed to be waterproof. And the only way to for anything to get from the inside of the intestine where the poop is, oh, poop, that's, that's a word that Instagram doesn't like. Uh, sorry, I'm going to use it today, but we're going to come up with different words for these things. And I'll have to retrain on how to speak. But anyway, the poop within the intestinal tract is not supposed to be making any contact with the rest of your body, except very specialized cells that line the intestines. And they get to pick and choose what they absorb. Sugar is one of them, glucose. Glucose and fructose are among the things that those cells absolutely want. And then that substance will go into the cell, feed that cell first. And when it's had enough to eat, pops the rest of it to the, to the blood supply that it's sitting on top of. That goes to your liver, that goes to your pancreas and the rest of your body. The portal vessels are simply the blood vessels that connect your intestines to the liver. Your liver gets the nutrients first when it comes to intestinal normal nutrient absorption. Okay, liver metabolism is critical to control of blood sugar. So anything you're doing to injure your liver, like tailgating at an LSU game, you know, or some such, Mardi Gras, um, those things impact liver health. And when the liver doesn't work properly, then all of a sudden your blood sugar uh, metabolism goes out of whack. Now, many of you have heard the terms GLP-1 because there are prescription medications that mimic GLP-1. These are called, you know, Ozempic and um, uh, Wegovy, I guess that's the same thing. And there's a series of them, terzepatide and semaglutide. These are GLP-1 agonists, which means they're very similar to your body's natural, but your body makes this. Your body makes GLP-1. You don't need to spend $1,000 a month on this drug. You just need to know that your body makes it. Your body's version only lasts a few minutes, whereas the prescription version lasts an entire week. And there's the difference between those two. Okay. Um, but you want that GLP-1 working in your favor. And one day I'll talk in more detail on how those work. Uh, Cause I think people just call it a miracle and they move on and you should know how they work. Um, insulin, everyone kind of in the modern era knows insulin, right? Um, it is a hormone made by your pancreas that helps tell your fat cells for lack of better words to absorb sugar um, and your muscle cells to absorb sugar. And so sugar goes into these different parts of your bodies by force in the presence of insulin until one day it stops happening. One day the system gets so overwhelmed that your body just can't absorb the sugar anymore. And now you're left with chronically elevated blood sugar. And we call that insulin resistance. And that would be type two diabetes. Um, sugar is used immediately if it can be. And it's used by your heart and by your brain. Your brain really can only use glucose and ketone bodies. Um, your muscles use glucose, right? And what is not used gets stored in your muscle as glycogen. That's a storage process. Or it gets get converted into fat, right? So as you start putting on weight, that is your outward message to your brain that should say, huh, I got too much glucose in my body. Right, I'm 30 pounds overweight right now as I sit staring at you. 
I got a blood sugar problem. I never really thought of that. I always thought, nah, I'm in a puzzle. I had two kids. I'm under stress. It's a blood sugar problem, really, when it comes down to it. And it's an intestinal tract problem. And I don't consider myself as having an intestinal problem because I can eat pretty much what I want to, so I think, without any issues. So I'm kind of right there with you menopausal women like, what's wrong with me? Maybe it's my hormones. Maybe it's my age. Certainly my doctors have told me that. <laughs> my friend who's an intern has just looked at me and said, you're fat. <laughs> and it's really your problem is you're fat. And I get it. <sighs> I get it. Anyway, so we're going to try to fix that. Okay. Dysfunction occurs, like in other words, disease occurs when those cells are no longer how your body's getting blood sugar. You've broken down the lining of your intestinal tract with inflammation to the point where sugar is slipping in between the cells, not through the cells, but in between the cells, which means the rate of speed cannot be controlled. That inflammation also breaks up GLP-1 your body naturally makes. And the combination of those two things means that your insulin's really not turning on in your pancreas, your blood sugar is getting chronically high, and now you're becoming resistant to insulin, even if you were able to make it. So there, that's how problems set in. That's where all of us are. So 50 to 60% of the audience listening to this conversation Really, their only complaint might be, eh, I gained 15 pounds, but I had two kids and I'm menopausal. So what the hell, right? You're on your path to type 2 diabetes, believe it or not. And worse yet, you're on your path to type 3 diabetes, which is dementia. So as it turns out, dementia is being labeled type 3 diabetes because these patients all, even if they've not been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes prior, all have chronically elevated blood sugar somewhere in the 10 years preceding their dementia. And they just never really reached the, you got diabetes and so I'm not gonna put you on medicines. That's your doctor is sitting and waiting. Meanwhile, the damage is being done. So type one is autoimmune, we see this in children. Type two is obesity related. It's kind of like where 60% of us are headed, to be honest with you. And type three is long-term neurologic dysfunction whether or not you were ever diagnosed with type one or type two, uh, in other words, dementia. And as we get older, it's not enough to have longevity. You want to remember your longevity. Like you want, I want to be walking and talking and remembering and enjoying my grandchildren in the same way my parents are. They're in their eighties and they are remembering and enjoying and they're active. So right? That's where I kind of need to be in 30 years when I'm in my 80s. Um, the consequences of long-term blood sugar include glycation or protein. I hate to throw these big words at you, but basically proteins don't like being in a lot of sugar. It makes them stiff. Imagine, I don't know if any of y'all are old enough. Everyone here is old enough. What am I saying? I guess young teenagers are not listening to this. You remember the days where there weren't really fancy candy. You, you got the the string that was dipped in sugar that now has cubes of dried sugar on it, right? What do they call that? I can't remember. It was like string candy or whatever they called it. You literally just take wicks of string, like a, a shoestring. You dip it in really concentrated sugar, and then it crystallizes on the string. You pop it out like a lollipop, and you sell it to people. Okay. Sugar crystallizes things and turns it hard. And so if any of you guys have ever tried that candy, the little string is flexible except where the candy is. And then it's stiff, right? You can't tie your shoes with a string because it's stiff. This is the same concept. Proteins need to be folded a very particular way for them to work. And they need to be a little bit malleable to do the job that they need to do because they're constantly like transformers going from one position to another position and then unfolding and folding and unfolding and fold. That's how these chemical reactions occur, right? With proteins that are malleable in this way. And when you glycate those proteins, they cannot do that. And this causes premature aging, especially in parts of your body that are flexible, like your skin, your blood vessels, your joints, your muscles, right? So think of all those, th your mind, your mind's plasticity. That is another way to think of it. 
all the things that should be flexible stop becoming flexible as you age. And a lot of that is related to glycation that occurs to these protein. Okay. And I think I talked about all that. You'll wind up having decrease in your balance, your mobility, it alters your immunity, your blood flow, because your blood vessels need to have that sort of elastin in them. You get end organ damage, blind kidney dysfunction, peripheral vascular disease, strokes, dementia, your liver stops working properly. You can get dementia and yes, cancer. Okay. So this is why you don't want to have this problem. And the scary thing is you cannot feel it when it is happening. And it takes many decades for you to get to those end organ problems. So you got time right now to intervene and make it stop is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Causes. Well, duh, sugar. I'm a sugar. Hall. I love sugar. My gummy bee. I cannot pass a gummy bear. I can help it. My mom's a dentist, and that is just a side effect of having nice teeth. We never had candy in the house. You could ask my brother. Um, and, you know, deprivation. You go seeking out things, right? So sugar is one of them. And one of the big things that we did in the 70s, and we replaced real cane sugar with high fructose corn syrup, which is even worse than sugar. Um, seed oils is another thing. We started cooking instead of with animal fat, we started cooking with seed oils and someone told us it was more healthy. And as it turns out, oh, I was wrong. Um, we started spraying our crops with pesticides and herbicides and fertilizer and stuff. And that was wrong. Um, we tend to eat all day. First world problems, right? We're freaking snacking all day long, all day long. And we don't even realize how many calories we're getting through liquid sources. So we're drinking all day long, something with calories. It's right. This is, this is where we have gone wrong. Okay. And, and basically the volume of food that we're eating is too much. Europeans are horrified when they see how much food we eat, like what's on a plate. It's horrific. You don't need that much food. I can promise you. And you don't need to cram that much in three times a day plus snacks. I'm okay with the plus snacks, but literally all your snacks and all your meals should be the exact same size every three hours, high in protein. Um, those things tend to stabilize blood sugar. Okay. Um, causes of elevated blood sugar. We kind of talked about that. The leaky gut situation where there's inflammation present and sugar's not going through the cells to the rest of your body. It's going in between the cells and getting straight into that blood flow. Um, we talked about um, the resistance of insulin as a result. That is a duplicate side. I am so sorry. Okay, so number one, okay, and don't shoot the messenger. Okay, every time I say this to people, they think perhaps uh, I am anti-gluten. And I am anti-gluten because as it turns out, gluten is the devil. It's what makes food yummy. I get it. It's what makes bread great. Gluten is not equal depending on how wheat is grown and the strain of wheat that makes the flour. So some people will recognize they can go to foreign countries and tolerate gluten-based foods. Tolerate. They don't get a stomach ache. Um, but they can't in America. That's for stomach aches. These people will also say, oh, well, I can tolerate sourdough. Here's the issue. There is a particular component of the gluten protein complex. Gluten is two proteins. Glutenin, which uh, that's the one I always talked about, glutenin, completely ignored this other molecule, gliadin. And I wonder if that's on purpose, and I'll tell you why. But gliadin, as it turns out, is the thing that is the problem. There are multiple foods that have glutenin and gliadin crossover reactivity so that it is not just wheat causing this problem. And you may not have any belly pains as a result. It's just causing inflammation and you may not perceive this as intestinal discomfort, but oats will do that. Quinoa will do that. Uh, there is an entire list of what seems like every grain on the planet, which is what a shame. Like, 
Wow, it's really sad, actually, um, how many things cross react with this gliadin protein. And so if you are thinking about doing a paleo based kind of diet, so a grain free diet, you, that is a great first step, to be honest with you. It's not easy to do, and you're going to have to do a lot of research. If you're like, that sounds too crazy for me. I don't know how to do it. Start gluten free. That's the first step anyone can do towards their health when it comes to the blood sugar issue. Um, why is gliadin so dangerous? Because your body makes a natural toxin called zonulin in the presence of gliadin and every mammal alive makes this toxin. Everyone we've tested makes this toxin called zonulin. We've known about it for 20 years. There are 10,000 papers published on this very topic. It is considered the start zonulin is considered the starting point, the cause for every chronic human illness, including cancer. This might be the first time any of you have ever heard of it. Uh, drug companies know about it for sure, and they're working on ways to try to block this zonulin. And it is interesting. This is not in the surgical literature. I had never found it in the medical literature that I've been just sort of reviewing in magazines that come to my house, GI magazines and whatnot kind of glance over this part. And the reality is you can, you don't need these medicines. You need to know what causes this zonulin. It's what you're consuming. And you could make a conscious effort to not consume that. It may not be easy and you may not be a hundred percent, but any percentage is going to help you. If that makes sense, you want to say no to sugar and alcohol. These things cause inflammation. They cause liver damage. Okay. And again, those problems, inflammation and liver damage lead to the end organ disease. Okay. We call the chronic blood sugar proteins, accumulation of glycation in product ages. So just think to yourself, if you want to age prematurely, go ahead and drink and have your, your sugar. If you do not want to age prematurely, then say no to these things. Unfortunately, again, the FDA, your doctor, the USDA will tell you, uh, artificial sweeteners are your answer to this. And those are just as bad because they destroy the microbiome. And many of those are carcinogenic. They cause inflammation. So when you say no to sugar and alcohol, it kind of means don't do added sugar to your foods. Rely on God's gift to you by, by way of honey and fruit, natural extracts like stevia, not the kind with xylitol in it. Um, those things have a tendency to satisfy the sweet tooth without destroying your gut health. Honey, it truly is a gift from God. And for a, what we're doing to the honeybee, that's a whole nother deep dive. Y'all start looking up what we're doing to honeybees. We're getting rid of honey. Hmm. That's bad. We need honey. Okay. So, so say no to granulated sugar to sugar alcohols, to artificial sweeteners, say no to high fructose corn syrup and say no to alcohol. Um, if you can, my mother will never do that. She'll drink her red wine to the day she dies. And I'm going to give a caveat on red wine because there are quite a bit of studies that show one glass of red wine with dinner at night for whatever reason helps you. And we think it's the phytophenols um, and there's not much alcohol in it. So that seems to be okay. There you go. I met you in the middle. Seed oils. They don't call it seed oils. They call it vegetable oil. And it's everywhere. Um, and there's a distinct correlation between our health and the transition from tallow, which is animal fat, and switching over to vegetable and, and canola oil. And there's a distinct association. Um, it's extracted with hexane, which is a known carcinogen. And when it is heated, it actually becomes a free radical creating element that you're consuming. So you're directly introducing free radicals to the intestinal lining when you consume foods that have these in there. So, so do your best cook with olive oil, coconut oil, use animal tallow or ghee. These things um, are going to be better for you in the long term because of that. And that is contrary to what you'll see at the FDA and the USDA. Ignore the food pyramid. It's totally upside down and crazy. And anyway, 
Um, stress. This is critical. All right. Stress kills. Stress causes an increase in your cortisol levels and cortisol is the hormone that raises your blood sugar to help you manage the, you are being attacked by, you know, a dinosaur kind of thing. Your fight or flight response is what the adrenal glands are achieving and cortisol is raising your blood sugar on purpose. So your muscles have energy. The problem is in the modern world, everything's causing stress. And now we have chronically elevated cortisol levels and, and you're going to have increased inflammation. You're going to have obesity and you're not going to be able to sleep. This alters the microbiome, which means you're not making good neurotransmitters, which means you're not thinking clearly. One of the ways that I manage stress in my own personal life is with a super patch. They make one that helps mitigate stress. And their studies show that this patch is the equivalent of spending six hours meditating. Now, I don't have six hours every morning to start my day to start meditating. So for this reason, one of these topically applied patches is my answer to cortisol. My second answer to cortisol is something called an adaptogenic. And in the morning, my adaptogenic is either, and there's three that you can use. There's ginseng. It comes in two types, Siberian ginseng. Um, there is an Asian ginseng. There is something called rhodiola, and these are all adaptogenics that cause energy. Don't want to take those at night. <laughs> you take those in the morning. They kind of wake you up a little bit, and they help blunt the cortisol effect in your body so you don't burn out your peripheral tissues. It doesn't stop the adrenal gland from making the cortisol. These adaptogenics, they help your body adapt to the new level of elevated cortisol. There is an adaptogenic you can take at night called ashwagandha. So if you've got ashwagandha around, don't drink it in the morning. Usually it's in tea or it's in a supplement. Take it at night. Take some ashwagandha and some magnesium at night. You'll find that it helps a little bit with stress and it'll help support the adrenal gland. Use a peace patch that helps support the adrenal gland. Okay. That's how we're going to use those. Um, oh, there you go. Um, because stress hurts your ability to sleep. I also use a super patch for sleep. And so the combination of calming down my cortisol and organizing my sleep patterns in my brain with these two topically applied patches, this is how I'm mitigating stress. I'm mitigating my stress because in the long term, it will help me control my blood sugar. So it's not a direct path um, between these patches and your blood sugar. You can't have elevated blood sugar pop on a patch and then like all of a sudden your blood sugar is normal. They're working on that technology. Just right now it's not available. But daily use of these two patches will calm down your cortisol levels, your stress, allow you to sleep and allow your brain to catch up. If you have pain that's keeping you up at night, they do have a pain patch, which I personally use when my arthritis flares. Um, I do ask my patients after surgery and even before surgery to investigate these patches. Do you want to use them? Because I believe they help overcome surgery. So if you're about to have surgery, investigate these patches as a way to get through your operative experience. Um, I am heading up a trial, clinical trial, using these devices in a hospital setting to help mitigate the stress of being hospitalized, help patients balance, help patients sleep, help patients with pain, all without giving narcotics and medications, which can sometimes cause complications in the hospital setting. So anyway, that's how I use these patches clinically. Now, sleep, you got to have sleep. We've talked about this many times. In fact, I'll probably do uh, one of these 30 minutes. Well, I guess they tend to be 45 minutes long. I talk a lot. Um, I'll do one of these lectures on sleep in particular. It is so critical to us. This is why we have sleep. Rest is critical. It's biblical. And you need to do it. You need to have your rest. Okay. Um, during your sleep, you heal. 
on your rest days, you heal. The fields of the land need to rest. They need to have their Sabbath. They need to heal. This is important, and all these things allow the nat the, the regeneration of energy and these hormones. Your body is in a very fine-tuned balance, and the way that balance kind of resets deep, back to normal is at night when you sleep, okay? Your cortisol gets controlled during this period of time. You're healing wounds during this period of time. There's a particular hormone that helps blood sugar. It's called orexin, not to throw all these science names at you, but it helps co coordinate blood sugar. It helps improve your metabolism and wakes you up. This hormone is generated in the hypothalamus, very close to the same nerves that control your adrenal gland seem to interact with the part of your body that controls orexin. These things are tied together, okay? Which is why your sleep is critical, which is why I can't say enough about this rim patch. In particular, you're gonna place it one hour before you sleep. It's not sedating. If you get called like me in the middle of the night and have to answer a phone call, that someone's life is hanging in the balance when you answer this phone call, by the way, you cannot be sedated. Right? So doctors are chronically lack sleep because we're always being woken in the middle of the night. And, and when we wake up, we have to be the same as we are in the middle of the day. So it's very stressful. And so this allows me to have sleep. And if the phone rings, I hear it. I pick up the phone. I am wide awake when I speak. I turn off the phone. I can lay down my head back down and my brain can reorganize the sleep patterns for me. And so this way it improves my quality of sleep. If you are a pilot, if you are a firefighter, a police officer, a doctor, paramedic, nurse, you work the night shift, or you travel a lot, investigate whether or not this helps you, okay? You cannot override anxiety. You cannot override pain with a REM patch. You cannot override a stimulant if you drink a lot of caffeine, if you're taking ADD medicines, et cetera, et cetera. You can't override those things. But if you're not using those things, you're not using caffeine or Adderall or any of these other things, then this will help organize your sleep patterns. It can take up to two weeks to work and you have to make sure it is sitting completely on the skin. So it, the studies have all used the forearm or the bicep where the skin is reasonably taut. It's easy to get to and it doesn't seem to get wrinkled at night. Okay. So that is my advice on that. Um, the microbiome, you know, that's my wheelhouse. So anyway, it is in, in fact impacted by everything around you. You can literally see things that cause stress to you and affect your microbiome, even though you didn't consume something that you would think would directly have an impact. The microbiome is responsible for reducing intestinal inflammation. It's responsible for improving the absorption of particular nutrients. It is responsible for improved skin texture. It helps you resist infection and it promotes healing. Your microbiome is the key to your longevity. Um, I'm a firm believer in fermented foods. If you can get them, if you can't, you hate fermented foods. Let's do some probiotics. Let's train your microbiome by eating as many raw fruits and veggies as you possibly can. A lot of my audience cannot tolerate fruits and veggies. They tend to do a carnivore diet. Diet. What are you going to do if you're a carnivore diet? How are you going to train your microbiome? There is a way around it without hurting your tummy. And that's by doing these um, powdered supplements. There's a million different versions out there. The one I personally use, and I've got no referral code. They don't give me money. This is just who I use. It's called Micro Ingredients. And they're out of California. I like it because it's American-based. Um, if you see a holistic doctor, a nutritionist or a chiropractor, they may have something called standard process for you, which I do love. That's also an American company. Those are prescription grade micronutrients. And so if you can't tolerate all the fiber and the cellulose in those things, you may still get the micro ingredients that your microbiome likes by virtue of these supplements. So that's my little free advice to you. And I, and I 
don't sell these things, but you can look them up online. The standard process is a prescription process that you can get through your nutritionist, chiropractor. I used to have an online platform for my patients, but I don't do a lot of that anymore. I have to admit. So I, I don't, surely I could still write a prescription for that, but you'd have to see me in the end. <laughs> You have to see me for, to do that. Uh, protein, protein, protein. Got to have your protein. You have to hydrate both water and and salts, and you need to stay active. These things all train your microbiome. As it turns out, they all help you sleep and they all help your stress. And those three things are going to help with your blood sugar monitoring. I just ordered one of these things. I'll let you know. Kind of scared to wear it to be honest with you, because like, does it hurt when you put it? On? I mean, I don't know kind of a wimp that seems like sensitive skin i'll let you know you get some feedback um but test your blood sugar and tell yourself do you have this blood sugar problem and you might if you have other illnesses odds are your blood sugar is higher than you think it is it spikes higher than you think it does and even if your resting blood sugar is normal check it after you eat and see what happens um that and how long do you spend in that high blood sugar range. If you're snacking all day long, trust me, you're spending all day in that range. Terrible. You got to monitor. We'll talk about that as time goes on. Supplements. We'll talk about that as time goes on. That's a long conversation, but there are some supplements you can do to support your body. Um, from a technical standpoint, again, we talked about this earlier in the lecture. I do use this externally applied technology. And I do so because it helps me with sleep and stress and sleep and stress are, are critical to control, to help you control intestinal inflammation. If you consume foods that train your microbiome and you control your stress and improve your sleep, you will find a vast improvement in your health, which is why I am educating you guys today. As always, I am sorry I spoke so long this morning, but I want to thank you for joining me. There is a typo in this slide, of course. I'm a one-man show. Y'all simmer down. This is what, I mean, you know, who's got time to do this? Um, but we moved or we renamed our services to um, resources. So dranatoger.com slash resources. And in there, you'll see our bullpen resources, which are all the slide decks for my variety of talks. I do broadcast these talks on a variety of different platforms, including Facebook and Instagram, YouTube, Rumble, um, uh, Telegram. Oh, I just started a Telegram channel. Look at me. Look how bougie I am. TikTok, Twitter. <laughs> I have no followers on Twitter. Somebody help me out. I've got like 12 followers on Twitter. No one knows me on the Twitter. I don't know how to use the Twitter. That's part of the problem. I got a few hundred people on the TikTok. Y'all can do that. Surely some of you guys do the TikTok. Find me on the TikTok, okay? Um, if you like to drive and listen to things, I am on Spotify, and this will be downloaded to Spotify. The disadvantage is you can't see what I'm talking about. You'll have to go to my website, and it is dranatoker.com slash uh, resources. Okay. Um, the sponsor to the show, as you know, is super patch. There are other sponsors to my content and under things I love, you will see those sponsors and investigate for yourself. I'm not making anybody buy anything. I'm just saying, investigate for yourself. These are products that I personally use that I personally like. Um, I find them high quality made. All the ingredients are fresh and they have pretty decent return policies, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, okay, so support the sponsors who support me. I'm going to be doing more long format podcast type um, uh, broadcasts. I'm going to start having a insiders group. Um, and as always, I have my online program which is sort of like the insiders group because I give a little 30 minute lecture to them every week. In addition to a 14 week program on stepwise fashion, how to train your microbiome and how that interacts with the rest of your body. So anyway, it was a pleasure spending the morning with you. I'm off to the operating room and I hope you guys have a very good day. And uh, remember 
mitigate your sleep, your stress, get more sleep, train your microbiome, and we'll see you next time.